Hi there, how would you calculate the volume of this building? You can describe the roof of this building with the graph of a function of two variables. This graph and the xy plane define a so-called solid. The volume of this solid is the volume of the building. In this video you are going to learn an easy method which will enable you to approximate the volume of such a solid. Take a look at this example. You only see the part of the graph which lies above the yellow rectangle, R, shown here. If we connect the rectangle and the graph of the function, we end up with the solid shown here. Suppose you need to calculate the volume of this solid, how would you do that? Before trying to answer this question, let's first recall the similar problem one dimension lower. Given a function f of one variable on the interval a to b, you know how to calculate the area of the region that lies under the graph of f. This area is equal to the integral of f of x, where x runs from a to b. This integral is defined as the limit of a Riemann sum shown here. The error can, of course, always be approximated by a Riemann sum, as shown here. We have divided the interval from an a to b in n smaller intervals, each with width delta x, and selected the right point xi from the ith interval. Then a rectangle is drawn with height f at xi and above the ith interval. By adding the areas of all the rectangles, we obtain an approximation of the area of the region. Could we perhaps do something similar? In respect to the volume of a region in free space, which lies under the graph of a function and above a rectangle? Let's start with dividing the rectangle R in n smaller strips with width delta x. If we now divide each of these strips into m rectangles with width delta y, we obtain n times m smaller rectangles with area delta x times delta y, which we call delta a. The next step is to select a point in each of these rectangles, for example, the point in the top right corner. Now consider r i j, which is the i-th rectangle in the x direction and the j-th in the y direction. The point in r i j is x i y j, and we can draw a box above r i j with height f at x i y j. The volume of this small box is given by f at x i y j times delta a. If we add the volumes of all these boxes, we obtain an approximation of the volume of the given solid. This expression is called a Riemann sum. Let us go back to the initial function and try to approximate the volume below its graph using a Riemann sum we first need to decide how many smaller rectangles we are going to use. Let's use n equal to 3 and m equal to 2. So in total we have 6 smaller rectangles, delta a equals 1, and we can write out the Riemann sum. Let us start with calculating the volume of the box above the first rectangle R11. As I can choose any point in this small rectangle, I prefer to take the top right corner of the rectangle, which gives the point 1, 1, which gives a volume of 15 of the box. Putting this in the formula gives us the first of the six terms we need. The second box above R1, 2 has a volume of 9, and the third box above R2, 1 has a volume of 12. The fourth, fifth and sixth boxes have volumes of 6, 7 and 1. Summing all volumes gives the total volume of 15. This means that the volume of the solid, which lies under the graph of f and above the rectangle r, is approximately equal to 50. As you can see from the picture, we still have some room left between all six boxes and the graph of the function. This implies that our approximation of the volume is smaller than the exact value. We should expect that the estimate of the volume improves if the number of rectangles in the Riemann sum becomes larger. Let's illustrate this. If we take n and m twice as large, the number of rectangles increases to 24 and the corresponding Riemann sum becomes 62.75.
we can continue to double n and m again and again and if we keep doing this we get the values as shown in the table now the question remains how can you compute the exact value of the volume you could of course do this by computing the limit of a Riemann sum where both m and n go to infinity just as in the case of a function of a single variable the limit of a Riemann sum is, in fact, the definition of an integral. In class, you are going to learn how this works for functions of two variables. In lots of cases where you can find antiderivatives, you will be able to compute the exact value of a volume under the graph of a function. In lots of other cases, however, the best you can do is to compute an approximation of the volume by means of a Riemann sum as explained in this video. See you in class.